Okay, Bernie, we're good. Thank you, Carson. Okay, um, I call this meeting of North Huron Council to order. Confirmation of the agenda that the Council of Township of North Huron accept the agenda for April 20th, 2020 Council meeting as presented. Do I have a mover? And folks, again tonight, just speak up and we'll just know who speaks up because I can't see all of you on my screen. Do I'll move that. Kevin, Kevin move that. moves. Chris second. Chris seconds. All in favor? Yes. So just a reminder that we a recorded vote. Did you recorded votes. I'm sorry. Take it away, Carson. Deputy Reeve Sipe. Yes. Councillor Falconer. Yes. Councillor Heffer. Yes. Councillor Van Henderson. Yes. Councillor Palmer. Yes. Councillor McBurney. Yes. And Reeve Bailey. Yes. So that vote carries seven to zero for the confirmation of the agenda. Thank you. Disclosure of pecuniary, pecuniary interests. Not hearing any, we'll move on. Number four, public comments, opportunity for members of the public to speak to an item of business on the agenda. Two minutes per person. Just for council's information, Carson can actually see uh, who would like to uh, speak to if, it, if, if there is anybody. So there, there are two members of the pu oh, public on the line right now. So they're both, their mics are unmuted if any of them wants to speak to any items on the agenda. Not hearing any, we're gonna move on. Consent agenda. That the Council of Township of North Huron hereby adopt consent items 5.1.1 and further that the Council of the Township of North Huron hereby receives consent item number 5.2 to 5.3.1 for information purposes. Do I have a mover? I'll move. Ada, seconder. Paul. Paul, any discussions on all of that material or anything in there somebody would like to speak to? Yes. Do you read? Through you, Reed? Yep, Paul. Yes, uh, I just wanted to, uh, on 5.23, on page three, uh, the CEO's uh, remarks, I'm just wondering if he could elaborate a little bit on the trailer part there. Just, uh, I just like to have that sort of what's going on there mentioned to us again. Are you there, um, Dwayne? So through you, your worship, uh, the director of um, recreation community services, and I uh, had a teleconference call with the Wingham Legion, um, and we have um, satisfactory resolved the matter in that the Legion is going to allow for three individuals who call the trailer park their permanent residence. So those three individuals are going to be able to reside in the trailer park. For all intents and purposes, the trailer park is considered closed. However, because that's their permanent residence, they will be allowed to stay in there. And in keeping with that, uh, they'll have access to water, hydro, and sanitary. Yes, through, through you, Reed. Yep, go ahead, Paul. Yes, yeah, so I, I was just wondering on the the report that you rolled out, though, is about the, um, the work that RJ Burnside has temporarily modified the work plan, if you could just, that's what I was asking you about. Sorry, I. Yes, through you, your worship, and I apologize. Um, so essentially, in terms of because of the COVID-19, uh, RJ Birdside was retained to do a phase one uh, envir environmental site assessment. Uh, they're going to do the work that they can in terms of things such as interviews, for example. But in terms of visiting the site and in terms of doing any sort of on site um, evaluation, that that will be postponed or may have to occur at a later date. Thank you, Dwayne. Anyone else? Anything on the agenda? No. Uh, go ahead, Chris. Read. Go ahead, Chris. Yeah, um, Dwayne, um, yeah, I. 
and I heard modified um, modify their plan Burnside um, can they not like is it their call or can we um, not I hate the word push but um, they're doing it on their own one person could do some of this measurements some of these measurements um, so is it just basically called off because they choose it through your worship in terms of the work itself will be completed. It's in terms of what we've indicated is that we wanted the work completed by April the 24th. What they've reported back to us is that um, because of the COVID-19 situation, they're having to make some adjustments to their work plan and through their work schedule. Uh, they're going to try to adhere to the April 24th deadline, uh, which is Friday. However, they've indicated that they can make no guarantees. Okay. okay, thank you. Anyone else? Not seeing or hearing anyone. We're going to go to a recorded vote, Carson. Thank you, Your Worship. So this will be a recorded vote. So, Councillor Falconer? Yes. Councillor Heifer? Yes. Councillor Van Henderson? Councillor Palmer? Yes. Councillor McBurney? Yes. Deputy Reeve Seip? Yes. And Reeve Bailey? Yes. And so that vote or that motion carries seven to zero, and that was for uh, that the consent agenda, uh, agenda item 5.1.1 be adopted and agenda items 5.1.2 to 5.3.1 be received for information. Thank you kindly. Uh, we have no public meetings tonight. Um, we have no clerks report tonight. Finance Department 7.2.1. If the Council of the Township of North Huron hereby received the uh, COVID, sorry, 19 financial update report from the Director of Finance and the Director of Public Works dated April 20th, 2020, for information purposes. And further, the Council authorized staff to proceed with the 2020. Projects as recommended in the 2020 project status chart uh, attached to this report. Do I have a mover? I have Paul. Do I have a seconder? Yep. Just speak up, folks, because again, I don't have everybody on my screen. Chris. Chris seconds. Conversations, questions, concerns? Um, Go ahead, Chris. Um, yeah, I, I did. I. If you go to the um, the project status update, where we have the list of everything that would be um, uh, what's being now or later, um, I, I was a little concerned about the leak at the Blyeth uh, Arena there. Um, I, I don't. Well, yeah, the Blyeth Community Center roof leaks. Um, no, I'm afraid of leaks. Leaks should be taken care of as soon as possible because there's always problems um, if you don't. So is there a chance that that tip gets moved over to proceed now? Was there any particular reason why it, it's not proceeding? Let me ask that first, I guess. Vicki, could you answer that one for us? Through, through. Sean. Oh, Sean, sorry. Uh, yes, thank you, Your Worship. Actually, there's a couple of reasons uh, why we are um, recommending that we proceed after uh, the uh, all clear is given. Uh, the leak has been going on for uh, for a period of time. Uh, it's not a particularly destructive one. Uh, and I think uh, uh, Vicky will agree with me on that. Uh, the big concern, especially with a roof uh, leak, I would like to uh, put an RFP tender out and require a site visit. That way we don't have bidders uh, just bid and blind and high. Uh, they can see it. I think it's a fairly straightforward repair. Uh, once we have that site visit, we close it and move on. I don't see this being put off till next year at all, just post pandemic. And of course that's barring, um, you know, extension of this event. Okay. Yes. Anyone else? Anything for anyone else? Not hearing anything, Carson, I'll hand it over to you for the vote. 
So the motion is that the Council of the Township of North Huron hereby receives the COVID-19 financial update report from the Director of Finance and the Director of Public Works dated April 20th, 2020 for information purposes. And further, that Council authorizes staff to proceed with 2020 projects as recommended in the 2020 project status chart attached to this report. So this will be recorded. Councillor Heifer? Yes. Councillor Van Henderson? Yes. Councillor Palmer? Yes. yes. Councillor McBurney? Yes. Deputy Reef Site? Yes. Councillor Falconer? Yes. And Reeve Bailey? Yes. So that vote carries seven to zero. Okay, 7.3.1 is next. The uh, NHWCC uh, Aquatic Electron Compressor, number two emergency replacement. If the Council Township of North Huron hereby receives a report prepared by the Director of Recreation and Community Services dated April 20th, 2020 regarding the replacement for the Aqua Center Electron Compressor number two for an estimated cost of $15,000 plus HS. Do I have a mover? Yes. I have Chris moving second. Yes. Rick. Rick. Yes. Okay, let's have a conversation. Thank you, Your Worship. Yep. Oh, Vicki wants to speak. Good. Go ahead. All right. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, just uh, following uh, the report here and things and what was presented, um, you know, as you may recall, we had an issue with the Dectron com compressor number one of the Dectron back in the fall. Uh, the Dectron uh, unit is, criti is a critical piece of equipment for the West Cass Community Complex Aquatic Center. It controls the air quality and humidity levels um, at the center as well as the pool temperature. In the fall, we did have the failure of the compressor number one, which required emergency replacement. Um, that replacement was undertaken, and now we're having an issue with the second compressor as well. Uh, both compressors were original to the construction of the facility, so they are 20 years old. Um, they uh, are critical again for the operation of the facility can operate on a very short term basis with one compressor. We had to have some um, have cliffs plumbing do some um, alterations up there to allow us to operate right now with one until we can get the second one in. Um, but we do need two two units to function properly. Um, the uh, estimated time frame to get the units in is three to four weeks. And um, we would be able to do that uh, with the closure and things with uh, do the undertake the replacement without any impact on programming, obviously. Um, the uh, estimated uh, cost for the replacement is $15,000 plus HST. Um, we are able to cover that within our operating budget. Um, under the Rec Recreation Administration budget, we have a $20,000 um, account line there for emergency, emergency repairs and facilities. Um, to date, we haven't spent any of that money, so there will not be any negative impact on taxation at this, at this time. And hopefully we won't need to uh, touch uh, that money the rest of the year. Um, Future considerations, uh, as I've reported previously, um, the facility is aging and as such, uh, we're going to see uh, a lot of uh, uh, failures and replacements, uh, equipment being replaced, being required and things. Um, staff have been uh, putting away money in the, in the budget each year and doing a transfer to reserve to help offset these costs and plan for these expenditures the best that we can. Uh, but we need to continue doing that. So, um, in relation in relationship with the strategic plan, this does fall in line with uh, our goal to keep the uh, municipalities, facilities, and infrastructure well maintained and uh, thoughtfully planned for the future. So, thank you, Vicky. Uh, now, would anybody like to comment on this? Questions, concerns, ideas? Not hearing anyone. Yeah, go ahead, Trevor. 
Uh, Vicki, in the normal practice of this, would we normally replace, like in the future, when we schedule replacement of these units, would we, because of this, would we usually schedule to replace both of them at the same time? Through you, your work uh, in the future, kn knowing that uh, we're less than six months apart, I think it would be probably a good or best practice to do so. Thank you. Anyone else? Not hearing anybody or seeing anybody wave. Carson, I'm going to hand it over to you for a recorded vote. Thank you, Your Worship. So the motion on the floor is that the Council of the Township of North Huron hereby receives the report prepared by the Director of Recreation and Community Services dated April 20th, 2020, regarding the replacement of the Aquatic Center Dectron Compressor number two for an estimated cost of $15,000 plus HST. So as Reed Bailey indicated, this will be a recorded vote. So Councillor Van Henderson. Muted, Ann. Van Henderson. I need a year to It's muted right now. Anita, you're muted. Turn your mute off. On. There you go. Yes. Yep. Uh, Councillor Palmer? Yes. Yeah. yeah. We can hear you. You're good. Councillor McBurney? Yes. Deputy. I know. I know. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Carson Harrison's uh, video is just, it must just be delayed. So basically, she's responding to the <laughs> previous questions. So, Deputy Recite? Yes. Councillor Falconer? Yes. Yes. And Reeve Bailey? Yes. So that vote carries seven to zero. Thank you. Anita, Anita, can you hear me? Can you hear me, Anita? Apparently not. Yeah. Remember her internet is slow out in the country. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, she's redoing something here, yeah. We're going to carry on and uh, we'll let her know we did know that she, we did hear that she said uh, yes, everything's fine. So going on to um, 7.4, 5, 6, 7, and 8, there are no reports. Correspondence, we're going to go to municipal, municipality of Central Huron, uh, request for financial support for the Auburn Dog Park maintenance. Um, I think before I ask for a mover and a seconder, I would like to have a conversation about this one. Um, Considering the situation we're in. Reed, Reed Bailey, if I could just interrupt for a second, do you want me to provide some, some context on this? Um, I would appreciate that, Carson. All right. Th thank you, Your Worship. So, this request um, came from Central Huron in December, uh, originally regarding maintenance for the Auburn Dog Park. Uh, what you'll have seen attached to your uh, agenda package was a um, presentation that was provided by the group who wanted to form the Auburn Dog Park at the time, as well as a council excerpt to the, the motion that was passed at the time. So this would have this was in 2016, so the previous council, and basically at the time, um, the council passed a motion agreeing to contribute to. Uh, equal cost to basically kickstart uh, the Auburn Dog Park. So it's North Huron's understanding that since that time where the dog park was uh, established, basically the group who was interested in the dog park has uh, kind of disappeared and some other residents have came forward indicating that they'd like to use the dog park, but that they couldn't because it hasn't been properly maintained. So what Central Huron had been doing was uh, contracting out that, those maintenance costs so that it could be used. Um, and that became too expensive for them. So basically what they've done is incorporated it into their public works operations. And once a month, Central Huron uh, has their public works uh, staff go out and cut the, the, the grass for the Auburn Dog Park. And basically at this time, what they're seeking is 
North Huron and Ashfield Comor Wawanosh to to share into those costs as as uh, the Auburn dog Auburn itself is located within the three municipalities. You'll also find in your agenda package um, the response that Ashfield Comor Wawanosh had uh, has given to um, Central Huron, as well as the formal staff report that went to Central Huron's council. So what we have now is a, a motion that is that was developed. Um, in part based on um, the direction that ACW went with their um, with their motion, as well as we also added in the fact that any agreement should be developed for a one year term, uh, as as uh, we don't want to commit too long term to to anything uh, like this, not knowing how the dog park is going to play out at this time. Thank you, Carson. I'm going to open it up for questions, concerns, comments. Go ahead, Paul. Yes, I I cannot justify spending the taxpayers' dollars on dog parks. Um, to me, it's not acceptable. We'd be, in a sense, responsible for the five different villages around our perimeters. And um, it's great if local businesses or community members want to put towards that. That that's fine. But I feel that North Huron has lots of um, trails and parks. And, and roads that they can take their pets on. That's my feeling with it. Uh, just that uh, to me, you're putting it towards one. Uh, to me, you, you're opening up to uh, White Church, Wingham, Belgrade, Blythe, and the Auburn. Um, and I just, I can't, uh, I just don't feel that's right. Thank you. Go ahead, Chris. Um, I, I'm feeling similar to that, to Paul. Um, I, I feel that there should be more buy-in from the dog users. <clears throat> like, you know, at $2,800, I'm not sure what it's perfectly matched at, but, um, you know, that's a, for 45 dogs. What is that, $66 a dog? Like, that's a lot of money. And uh, I'm a little concerned by the pictures that were given to us some fancy gates and, and all that. I'm just not sure how far this group wants to take this. And, um, you know, I don't want us to be part of anything um, that gets elaborate like that. Um, yeah, That's, so I, I, I'm having trouble with the, with the expense of it, even though it's only what, $900 or whatever, but it's still, it's $900. Reed Bailey, if I could just clarify a point that, that maybe it didn't come across the way I intended. Um, the, the original presentation, uh, that was from the group who wanted the dog park in 2016. That was That is just there for, for context purposes, so council could kind of see where this request came from. The request now is specifically just from Central Huron, uh, who just wants to cover the grass cutting costs, and they want ACW and North Huron to pay a third. So. As, as for the gates and, and all that, that was just from the original proposal for a dog park, and that is just there to provide context uh, context to this council. Uh, Carson, is this for information purposes only, or is this for we're making a decision tonight? Uh, through you, Your Worship, so this is a response to a request, request received from Central Huron. So uh, basically, at this time, staff are seeking direction on how we should be responding to this to the request from Central Huron. Anyone else yeah. speak to this? Hey, Billy. Go ahead, Trevor. Yeah, so, you know, to me, this is a discussion that has to, to, to talk about, uh, you know, cross-border services. Um, Central Huron had made it perfectly clear, uh, you know, four or five years ago that they they have a number of services within their um, municipality that they're not willing to provide support um, to other municipalities for recreation or such work outside of their borders. The question though becomes is if that's something that they're willing to look at and change, then you know maybe that's a discussion that the cross border services uh, committee can can look at. Um, there has been lots of discussion or there was some discussion with Central Huron uh, 
back when the Tim Hortons and the cowbell was being um, uh, built in the sense of uh, collaborating on costs with regards to sidewalks and, and extensions of sidewalks in order to get pedestrians out to those co those commercial in industries. Um, nothing has really been done on that at, at this point. I, I personally, I, I'm not against it. What I am against is the fact that we're just going to talk about this and not talk about the entire, um, you know, cost sharing arrangement of the, how we share. Uh, if you want to talk about borders, let's talk about borders. If you don't want to talk about borders, let's not talk about borders. Um, that's, that's my position on it. Um, I'm willing to accept the, and share with costs in regards to this maintenance. If they're willing to share in costs of other things that we deal with that, that, you know, in essence, develop their, their support and their discussions on their end of their the stuff. So, you know, that's the part where I am. I think it's a, it's, it's a discussion that whatever council decides has to go back to the community or the, 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 uh, the cross border services department um, uh, group to have a discussion with uh, central here on, on a, on a grander scale on what that looks like. I'm just going to follow Trevor up there because I've, uh, I'm on the same train of thought. Um, when I was on council previously, we asked them to help us with the Goliath arena. I forget what it was we were doing, but, um, and at the time the, the rec, uh, the rec uh, department had numbers of how many of their community people uh, were using our, our services there. And um, it was, if I recall, it was quite a few and, and, and the council of the day for central urine just said, we don't pay for anything, anything outside of our borders. So I, I would like to, I would like to have a chance again, uh, as Trevor has said for our cross border committee, uh, when we're done with uh, Morris Turnberry, or maybe while we're going on with them uh, after the, the little problem we have socially here goes away to have the same type of conversation we're having with um, Morris Turnberry, because again, guys, we're supplying the water and sewer to two buildings going into central urine. They're getting 50 times the taxes as if it was just farmland. Farmland does not get taxed high as compared to industrial commercial. But we didn't get a penny back for it. The streets that Trevor's talking about, I'm, I, I've heard this and had conversations about this and there's been no communications. So I think it would be in our best interest just to maybe send a letter back to them saying, you know, we would be interested, but this is part of a, a bigger discussion we'd like to have with you folks at some time and just see where that leads. Um, just, and I'll throw it back out to council again, if there's anybody sure. else or staff that would like to uh, comment further on it. I'd like to uh, speak to that, Mr. Irie Bailey. Yeah, go ahead, Kev. Um, I, I agree with the, uh, having the uh, uh, more direct uh, cross-border uh, uh, conversation with them. And, but I'd just like to uh, throw out just for uh, council's uh, uh, information that the uh, the dog park in in, uh, in Auburn is uh, it's also used by uh, rate payers to, uh, to uh, uh, East Wallenash as well. So some of the people that are using it are our rate payers. So just to keep that in mind. Thank you, Kevin. Um, anyone else? So what would, what would the council like to do with this? So would they like to say, go ahead with it and say, we'd like to and, uh, put an antidote beside it saying, we'd like to have further conversations with you. And of course, I'm the firm believer as a guy that's done a few negotiations that once you give the uh, key away, you're not going to get in through the door anyway. Um, or do you want to send a letter back to him say, yes, we, we would like to be involved in this, but we'd like to, to have a, a conversation a more round about a round of conversation uh, concerning where we can go together as two municipalities. Um, and uh, as everyone knows, I think they'd be open to the, the conversation because as everyone knows, I'm trying to push to have the county building moved to Blythe. It won't be in Blythe. It will be in um, Central Huron and we will be doing the hookups for it, but there's no tax gain there for either one of us, except for Blythe and, and for North here, for all of us in the area, it, it would be a great uh, drawing card uh, to our downtowns. And of course it's central to here in County, end of day, it's central near in County and we're spending $40 million. I think we should put it in the center of here in County. 
but that's the county thing. I just want you guys to just keep in mind that that's 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 on the go too. Reed uh, Valley, I, uh, how about it? You're back, Anita. I say something. You may. Yeah, it's a uh, it's really spotty internet here, and I can't see half of it. Can't hear half of it, so I'm trying. Um, I would like to defer to the cross border service committee at the time and just wait till uh, till they'll meet again. Thank you, kind of, Chris. You were going to say something. Exactly the same. Okay. Anyone, uh, anyone else like to speak about it? Um, Carson, do I need to, uh, I didn't read the motion out. We don't have a motion. I think we hear from council that they want to go in a bit of a different direction. Yeah, through your, your worship. So I've crafted a, a draft motion based on, um, where the conversation is going. Feel free to amend, um, as you see fit. Uh, but basically what I have now, the motion reads that the council of the township of North Huron hereby directs staff to inform Central Huron that North Huron is in favor of supporting maintenance costs for the Auburn, Auburn Dog Park, but is in favor of deferring these discussions until cross-border service negotiations can be held. Questions or comments? Not hearing any, can I get a mover? Need a move, seconder. Oh, sorry, sorry, it's, it's got to be a. Um, sorry, sorry, it's got to be a. Um, Carson has to do it. Sorry. Oh, I need a through your mover and a seconder first, though. So I have oh, council been hit. Some is moving it. I just need a seconder. Sorry, I got one too many things on my mind right now. Uh, go ahead for a seconder. Chris. Chris seconds. Carson, it's your turn. It really is your turn this time. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, Councillor Palmer? Yes. For deferring? Yep, yep, for the motion that I just read. I can read the motion again if, if you guys want. As uh, long as no, it's for defer tabling. Tabling or deferring? Yeah. So uh, the motion is that the Council of the Township of North Huron hereby directs staff to inform Central Huron that North Huron is in favor of supporting maintenance costs for the Auburn Dog Park, but is in favor of during these discussions until cross-border service negotiations can be held. Yes. Councilor McBurney? That way I'd say yes. Deputy Reef Sipe? Yes. Councilor Falconer? Yes. Councilor Heffer? No. Councillor Van Henderson? Yes. And Reeve Bailey? Yes. So that vote carries six to one uh, with the no being Councillor Hatton. Thank you, everyone. 8.2, the Blythe Festival request for emergency funding. The Council of Township of North here and hereby direct staff to investigate potential options to provide financial relief for the Blythe Festival as a result of the COVID-19 for Council's consideration on the May 4th, 20 Council meeting. Um, I'm going to get a mover for that before we talk about it. I'll move that. Uh, is Kevin. that you, Rick? Kevin, Kevin and Paul seconds. Hey, let's have a conversation about that one. Who'd like to start? Uh, I'd like to chime in if I could there, uh, Mr. Reeve. Go ahead, Kevin. Uh, just on the, uh, on the, on the basis that the theater requires the, uh, uh, artists or the, uh, the playwrights to carry on with presenting or uh, crafting their, their plays for the next year, um, that as soon as the opportunity, uh, does arise for the economy to go back they can reopen again, they would have to have them all ready to go. So uh, I'm just, I'm, I'm kind of, I don't know what kind of assistance, but I'm in agreement that uh, uh, just so that they wouldn't fall behind because it, it could, it could end up to where they would lose another year. And I wouldn't want to see that happen. Anyone else like to speak to that? Go ahead, Paul. Yes, um, I, I heard it mentioned on the, 
um, radio about uh, money coming from the government and it's been offered to the arts and tourism. I think it, that should definitely be looked at first. That's my thought. Thank you. Anyone else? Go ahead, Bailey. Go ahead, Chris. I'm, uh, I'm, you know, I can't help but be concerned that if we gave them uh, any money, a donation, um, does that not mean we should help any other store owner that would ask? Because it's still selling something. It's Other questions or concerns? I'm going to speak to it. Go ahead, Anita. I would like to know what uh, they themselves have done to um, to find some financial relief. Like, do they have their um, uh, their whatever their their people who work there, or are they laid off, or what is going on there? And if maybe that is one of the uh, options we can uh, direct staff to to investigate that, or I don't know. I, I recognize that the Blight Festival is a really major um, attraction for the town of Blight and that their season is canceled anyways. They won't start in July or August or whenever things get normal again. So I don't think they have any cost actually, well, not any extra for um, playwrights in that. But maybe I'm wrong. Anyone else? Hey, Bailey. Go ahead, Trevor. I think we have to understand that this is a, I think we wait for the report, let, let staff determine discussions from Janet, the management at Fly Festival, as, as well as uh, the artistic director about what exactly, we, we have $15,000 in our budget that we were going to be giving them for marketing potentially. So you know, the, at the end of the day, I think ultimately my position is let the staff determine uh, what, if anything, that we can do, and if whatever it is that comes back to council, councillors can have uh, all the questions that are being asked tonight um, as it relates to what what information or what funding are they getting and other sources, what other supports have they got, all that stuff can come back, and when that when we have that information, make an assessment of whether we can or when or we can or we should uh, support the Blythe Festival in, a, in somehow financially uh, support them. Thank you, anyone else? Um, I, seeing that I'm gonna uh, follow up on that a bit too. Um, this is one of the difficult decisions you have to make. And it's not brought on by anything we've done. It's brought on by the, uh, the situation we find ourselves in socially. Um, they are, really important to the Blythe community. They're really important in North Huron. Um, we need to help as many people in as many ways as we can. And I, and I, and I totally uh, agree with, um, with uh, Chris that maybe there's sometimes we're gonna have to say no. Maybe there's sometimes we just can't do it. Having said that, we did, um, we did put $15,000 away for them to do advertising. And this is something we do for them year after year. We've done it for a long time. So the money is sitting there for them to use, but they cannot use it. But we could change that to where they could use it, knowing that it's in our tax base anyway, and it is year after year. Uh, they did come for more money. I think it was last year, the year before we held the ground and said, no, you can only have the 15,000. So it's not like we're just giving and giving and giving. But I have to agree with Trevor. I think we should send this, all they're asking for is to send this back to staff. And Anita had some really good questions there. And just then he, we can have the two weeks to talk to them. We not, we, I don't do that part. It's our staff that's gonna do that. Have a conversation with them and say, what funding are you getting? Because there are some new fundings coming out all the time. So I think it'd be in our best interest to keep everything we've said together in mind, but give it back to the staff and say, staff, can you look into this further and give us the layout of what's going on? Um, it's it's kind of like uh, something else we're going to touch on shortly. They'd already started everything they were doing and they have the people there and they're working and they've done great jobs and it's so great for our community. It's so great for here in County. So we don't want to abandon them, 
but at the same time, we want to be careful with our money, but that money is there, it is allocated for them. It's just a matter of we're going to shift from one thing to the other for this season only. I'm going to recommend that we put a motion forward saying that, uh, or the motion forward that uh, we'll have the staff look into it and bring it, bring it back to us at the next meeting for a decision. And again, guys, this is one of the decisions that you really want to help. You've got a lot on your mind. Um, somebody's not going to be happy no, much, no matter which way you go on this, but that's politics. That's politics, guys. So let's just do the best for everybody we can, but I think it would be in our best interest to simply have staff just bring a report back for us. If I could get a, any more, anybody else want to speak to it? Not seeing any, I don't think I have a mover for that one. Can I get a mover? Or a different motion? Trevor moves the, the motion that was been requested. Do I have a seconder? I'll second that to uh, Rebelly. Okay, that's Kevin. And this is for information purposes. They're gonna, we haven't spent the money. We're gonna have it bring back, come back before us and give us time to uh, look it over. Okay, Larson, it's your turn again. Thank you, Your Worship. So the motion on the floor is that the Council of the Township of North Huron hereby directs staff to investigate potential options to provide financial relief for the Blythe Festival as a result of COVID-19 for Council's consideration at the May 4th, 2020 Council meeting. So this will be a recorded vote. So, Councillor McBurney? Yes, sir. Deputy Recipe? Councillor Heffer? Yes. Councillor Falconer? Yes. Councillor Van Hitterson? Yes. Councillor Palmer? Yes. And Reeve Bailey? Yes. So that vote carries seven to zero. Thank you kindly. We're gonna move on now to 8.3, Wingham BIA and Blythe BIA RE request to allow for electronic BIA meetings during the COVID-19. That the Council Township of North Huron hereby authorizes the Wingham BIA and the Blythe BIA to conduct electronic meetings during the COVID-19 declared state of emergency in accordance with the Township of North Huron procedural bylaw. And further, the Council directs the clerk to work in collaboration with the Wingham BIA and Blythe BIA for the development of a procedure to uh, ensue that all BIA meetings still will still follow existing meeting rules and remain open to the public as required under the Municipal Act. Um, do I have a mover for that? I have Paul. Do I have a seconder? No seconder. Okay, we have Rick as a seconder. Um, open it up to questions and comments, concerns. To be quiet, I don't think we have any conversation on that. In that case, uh, last chance for conversations Folks, not hearing any, Carson, it's in your hands again. So the motion on the floor is that the Council of the Township of North Huron hereby authorizes the Wingham BIA and the Blythe BIA to conduct electronic meetings during the COVID-19 declared state of emergency in accordance with the Township of North Huron procedure bylaw. And further that Council directs the clerk to work in collaboration with the Wingham BIA and the Blythe BIA for the development of a process to ensure that all BIA meetings will still follow existing meeting rules and remain open to the public as is required under the Municipal Act. So, Deputy Reeve Sipe. Yes. Councillor Falconer. Yes. Councillor Heffer. Yes. Councillor Van Henderson. Yes. Councillor Palmer. Yes. Councillor McBurney? Yes. And Reeve Bailey? Yes. So that vote carries seven to zero. Thank you again, everyone. We're gonna go down to council reports now. Uh, 9.1, the Reeves activity report. I just would like to start off uh, just, to just, to, just a bit brief comment on Nova Scotia. The world is beating us up right now and then something like this happens and then we realize that what we're doing and we're going through is nothing really as compared to what's going on there. Um, I just wanna send my condolences, I'm sure I do for my staff and my council and my township. It's just, it's hard to understand how when things are so bad, they can get worse so quickly. Um, so I do wanna mention that uh, how uh, 
it's just it just bothers me and I'm sure it bothers all of us. I want to go on to uh, let the council know that the county has actually accepted a tender to put the crosswalks in, in crosswalk in Blythe this summer. We're finally going to get that through and they've also uh, the county has uh, reduced the speed limits on both ends of Wingham and they're going to extend them out a little farther outside of town to slow people down because they do come over this hill at the north end like it's a rocket slid on rails. Um, the other thing I would like to point out this time, and I sent an email out to you folks, is I spoke with Paul uh, Nickel at the Huron Business Development Corporation, and I'll mention that I am the county uh, representative on that. Um, uh, there's some funding for small businesses there, and, and the info is going to be sent out through the Blythe and Wingham BIAs, and I'm hoping we'll get it on our site on North Huron site when it's available. Um, it, it was, a, again, things happened so fast. Uh, 10 days ago, we were, we were, our funds were dried up at, at the futures. They were dry and we help hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of little uh, companies. Um, and we're hoping Anita is going to become a, a representative for us too. She's been uh, asked if she'll join the group. But again, with everything that's going on, that's been delayed. It's a situation where this is a fantastic group. They've been around forever. It's, it's federally run, but uh, their funding did dry up. To the point where they didn't even have enough money at 10 days ago to pay the staff. Well, that's turned full circle as of today. Paul sent me an email, which I shared with you folks, that uh, there is funding there and at 0%, and uh, maybe with some reduction in it. This will really help our main streets. So I've already sent it out to both BIAs to be prepared for it. Paul has said, get your claims in quickly because it's for all of your in county. So Blythe and Wingham. All small businesses in North Huron, listen carefully. Carefully listen. Get get a hold of this and get in there so you're at the top of the pile. Paul can be reached at 519-525-3338, and he runs the um, the uh, Huron or the uh, Futures program out of Brussels. Um, it's a wonderful thing, and and uh, I used to consult with them 25 years ago to consult for them, so it's been around for a while. So I just want to say again, that number is 519-525-3338. If you know anybody that's struggling, if you know anybody as counselors, give them a call and say, hey, give Paul a call. Let's get on top of this one. Um, and I'm hoping to have more information tomorrow and I'll be sending it out again to all the counselors, the staff and the BIAs uh, to let them know how we can move forward with this. This is coming at a good time because uh, retail at the best of times People go into it, most retail, small retailers, because they love what they're doing, not for paycheck. And they're not long learning that it's the love that'll keep them going because small business does have a difficult time to compete with the major competitors that give everything away. Having said that, let's move it on to 9.2 council member reports. Any verbal or written updates from members who sit on boards or committees? I'm gonna say there won't be too many of that. I'm gonna go on to 9.3. Comments from members. Would any of the council members like to speak about anything, any conversations or what they know is going on or would like to have something going on? Now would be the time to talk. Uh, Chris. Go ahead, Chris. Uh, Reeve, um, since it's funny, since the, I get my first comment is, I just received the paper. And, and then the next is, and, and I'm not laughing about it, it's serious. These are our ratepayers in East Wall and Ash farmers um, complaining about the budget. So, uh, well, they complain about the budget, complaining about the road, um, just and how it's being done, and trees being cut down on uh, the nature center line. Um, so, you know, these are things that uh, I'd like to speak um, or ask. Privately, but I thought it has to be brought up because uh, that's our that's our job. Um, so just loosely, I'm saying that um, that you know people are people are talking, people are speaking, and uh, they have the right, and uh, they have asked they ask questions, and our job is to answer them. So, Chris, I'm actually glad you brought that up because the fourth bulletin I forgot to talk about. So I read the paper too, and I wasn't too happy with it. Uh, not the paper's fault. Um, I have asked my staff to put together, our staff, sorry, to put together how the taxes come about, what you actually get for your taxes, where it goes, and how it all works out. 
You have to bear with me, uh, everyone, because this won't be done overnight. Um, we have a lot on the go um, with developers, as you've seen in the report from the uh, CAO. We're also working with developers. We're meeting with uh, financial people that can get involved, the people, construction people. So we've got, we, we didn't stop working just because of the COVID-19. We're still moving the, uh, the business of the day forward. So we've a lot on the plate. But I have asked the staff to uh, put together and I'll work with them on exactly where all the taxes are spent, how much taxes comes in from each ward, so we can all get a clear understanding of whether it's the school, the county, or the municipality, who pays for the town hall, who pays for the, uh, the, the all the buildings that we use and the parks that we that they're available to us, uh, and all this kind of stuff. And I won't dwell on this anymore, but I just want you to know, Chris, that I did pick up on that, and staff will be we will will be bringing a report to council, and it's going to be an in-depth report, and it's going to lead to a further conversation. It may take us till the fall to do this, but it's going to be one that we can, you're right, East Wallanosh has the right to know where their money's going and how much of it, by God, we're gonna produce it. So if you'll just bear with me, Chris, and anybody anybody you counselors talk to, let them know that the staff is totally aware of this uh, and we're, we're going to have a full blown conversation as a council about this, okay? Okay. Big Bailey. Go ahead, Trevor. So I am I am all for individuals or community members having concerns about taxation and where it's being spent. But the problem that I have, and I use I, and I and I and I ask this question specifically for this purpose. I asked for the budget meeting discussion to be moved two weeks at least to see how many questions get asked to the township or counselors before we passed it. And the answer I got was nothing. The minute we pass it, Everybody's up in arms and has problems with something or another. This is not the time to be asking have problems with the budget. You have a problem, you should be dealing with it at the time of when we go through the budget. We've been, we had budget discussions for almost four months. Community members need to be informed, but they also need to take ownership and asking the questions not only after it's been approved. So I agree. Donna has the, the budget presentation about how much money comes in, where it goes, all of that. I don't know how much more in depth we can be and more specific we can be for people to understand it. But that's, but that's a problematic to me is when we ask the question, how many people actually had questions or concerns on the budget over a four week period, the answer was none. That's a problem for me, especially now when people are saying we have concerns or issues about East Wallenosh's part in the budget. So that's my comment. I just want to make sure that we're not, we're not making a mountain out of a molehill when we're already doing that discussion in budgets and making the staff dig into more information than we already have if people just don't understand how to read it. And if that's the case, then they need to contact the staff to get some clear understanding. So that's my position. I don't want to make a mountain out of a molehill for the staff. I appreciate that, Trevor. This this isn't just for Chris. This goes back to when I was on council before. This goes back to the beginning of um, amalgamation. Um, we're going to present it in a way that it's very clear. And it's not just about numbers. It's about people that are concerned about where their taxes are being spent, where the money's coming from and where it goes. And I'm going to do my utmost to put it down into a layman's terms that we can all understand. And we will invite anybody and everybody that wants to listen. And as Chris is, I agree with Chris that this, it, it's just not with Chris. This has been around for, for 15 years. 
So this is going to lead to a further discussion about uh, council and, and, and how we collect and how we spend. And we will be the council that will have this so that in the future councils, and I'm hoping starting next year, councils will not have this worry. They People will understand on a layman's terms where and why, okay? So I, and, and, and I've already spoken with staff and they know what I want and, just, and, and we understand that this is not uh, shooting the gun from the hip. This is going to be well thought out long before we step out on that main street. And it's going to be presented so that everybody can understand. As a matter of fact, we're gonna do such a good job, Donna, that other communities are gonna use our method. I don't see a smile. Oh, there's that smile, Donna. So anyway, um, it is something that uh, we're going to go uh, forward with uh, and, uh, and end it. And we'll all be uh, better off for it, I believe, when we're done. And, and I understand your concerns, Trevor. I do understand your concerns, but just trust me on this one. Uh, we'll be fine. Anyone else? Go ahead, Trevor. Hey, Billy, the only question is, is that what this report details and what this report is requiring, mm -hmm. I think needs a motion of council and a request of council to do that. We need to have something recommended Determine that council needs to have, you know, what exactly they're going to get. And we can make a motion to determine what, what that is and the timeline that we want it by. So that staff knew, know directly what we want. And if that's the case, then so be it. I don't, I think I just an issue or request that that's being asked by a rate payer. I don't want to blow up the discussion for, or something that has been for, I don't even know how many people like the question is we need what different information are we using? So council needs to have the understanding of what we want. And then council as a whole needs to make a motion to determine whether that's the report we want. Rafe, Rafe, yeah, go ahead, Chris. Uh, I did not bring this up to make work. I just brought it up as current events. And that's where we're at right now um, as part of our uh, agenda. It's something that I thought would be of value to everybody to hear. All right, we can leave it at that. I, I have to face these people and I have been, and we talk about just exactly what you said uh, from our report from Donna, it was well done. And I recite that, you know, to the necessary points and, um, you know, in, in each case, it's a big, you know, they're still angry as heck and it's assessment is the main reason, which isn't even our fault. It's it's MPAC. So, you know, we talk about, um, well, they're going to be redoing it in the next four years, like this year or next year for the next four. And uh, I'm hoping that farm prices don't go up. If they can stay steady and keep assessments at a steady, you know, increase, a little increase, if not any a decrease would be great, then things will be, you know, it'll look different. Our budget will look different. Their taxation will look different. So just trying to get through the year and um, these are unhappy people. They're facing uh, very low crop prices and livestock prices and things do not look good. However, we have a discussion with, I have a discussion with them and, uh, you know, that's my job as if anybody phones, any taxpayer phones you. Um, it's okay. I'm not asking for anything extra here. It was information only. Um, that, that's okay. Chris. So on our strategic plan, which I do not have in front of me. Um, I believe we're going to assess the political, I forget what it was on the political side or how things are made up. Uh, do you have it there, Paul? I see you reaching. And it's to do with um, how our, how we, I forget what, it, I don't have it in front of me. I wasn't prepared to have this in front of me. And that's going to be part of that conversation, a big part of that conversation. So I'm going to, uh, going to send it back to Carson to find out the legalities of this. We'll bring this, I guess, back before the uh, council another day.
because it was brought up by a counselor. Um, and I think uh, we should uh, get a better hold on where we want to go. And as Trevor said, bring it before council. Um, but it is on our strategic plan to, to be taken care of. So thank you for that conversation, everyone. And let's keep moving on because we'll just have Carson look into that and uh, bring it back to council another day for a little more of a conversation. Anyone else? Anita's back with us. Did you want to speak to that, Anita? I don't think she's back on yet. Um, anyone else like to say anything? Comments from the members? Not hearing, let's move on. Notice the motion, there are none. Bylaws, we'll have uh, bylaw number 19, 2020, a bylaw to provide for the drainage work Township of North Huron and Ashfield, Colburn, Wabanosh in the County of Huron. Bylaw number 20, 19, 2020 being a bylaw to provide for a drainage works in the Township of North Huron and Ashfield, Colburn, Wabanosh in the County of Huron. Rental Municipal Drains 2020 to be read a third and final time signed by the Reeve and Clerk and engrossed in the bylaw books. Do I have a mover? I have Paul, seconder. I'll move, I'll start from Rick seconds, questions or comments? Hearing none. Oh, so Reeve. Oh, sorry, go ahead, Chris. Uh, through you, Reeve, this is to Donna. Um, generally, how long does it take to get our money back? To get your money back from, sorry, from where? To get, to get the municipality's investment back regarding the, uh, like we're paying for the whole, well, for a lot of it up front, and then then the uh, farmers uh, involved in the drain, they're paying, so we get, they pay us, correct? Or how does it go? Yes, um, Carson could, Carson's involved with that as well, but normally what happens is uh, once the project is totally completed, then um, it's portioned out by assessment and then we bill the uh, property owners at the end of the project. So normally like anything else, we give um, usually the 30 days to pay. And then if it isn't paid, then we add it to their, uh, it accumulates interest and then we add it to their taxes the next round. Any other questions? Is that what you're thinking? Yeah, I was just, you know, this is a lot of money that we have to borrow, basically. And, uh, you know, if we have to sit on it for, well, I'm not sure when we have to pay Dietrich, or not Dietrich, but the, um, the, the, the contractor, contractor yeah, um, you said 30 days. So we might be sitting on, on this borrowed money for, you know, a few months anyways then. Yes, that's right. To get a clear picture. Any other questions or comments? Not hearing any. Carson, I believe I have a mover and seconder. Do you want to handle it now? Thank you, Worship. So the motion on the floor is um, that bylaw 19 2020 be given third and final reading. So, Councillor Falconer? Yes. Councillor Heffer? Yes. Councillor Van Henderson? <laughs> Councillor Palmer? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That was a sick yes. Uh, a yes for me. Councillor McBurney? <laughs> Councillor McBurney, your, your mic is muted. Deputy Reeve Sipe? Yes. And Reeve Bailey? Yes. So that vote carries 7 to 0. The next regular council meeting will be held on Monday, May 4th, 2020 at 6 p.m. through electronic participation unless notified uh, otherwise. All committee and board members remain suspended until further notice. 13 is other business. Does anyone have any other business? Not hearing any. Um, closed session. There is no closed session tonight. Confirmation of the bylaw. Uh, bylaw number 36, 2020, being a bylaw to adopt, confirm, and ratify matters dealt with by the Council Township of North Huron at the April 2020, 
2020 meeting. Do I have a mover? Chris. Chris and seconder. Chris. Paul. Chris and Paul, Carson, I hand it over to you again. Thank you, Your Worship. So this will be a recorded vote to confirm the actions of the April 20th council meeting. So Councillor Heffer. Yes. Councillor Van Hitterson. Yes. Councillor Palmer. Yes. Councillor McBurney. Yes. Deputy Reeve Site. Yes. Councillor Falconer. Yes. Reeve Bailey. Yes. So that vote carries seven to zero. Thank you. Adjourn that the Council Township of North Huron agrees there being no further business before Council. The meeting hereby is adjourned at 7 16 p.m. Do I have a mover? Uh, Kevin, yeah, I will. Kevin moves, seconder. Rick. Rick seconds. Carson, it's your baby again. Thank you, Your Worship. And I'll just clarify. So the time is 7.06. Uh, Reeve, you must have been looking at your... your yep. Uh, <laughs> um, Not off so, so Councillor Van Hitterson. It appears she's left the meeting. So in accordance with our procedure bylaw, uh, basically she'll be deemed at from this vote. So... Councillor Palmer? Yes. Councillor McBurney? Yes. Deputy Reeve Site? Yes. Councillor Falconer? Yes. Councillor Heffer? Yes. And it actually looks like Councillor Van Henderson's back. So, Councillor Van Henderson? Um, I would like to. Okay. So, yeah. And Reeve Bailey? So the motion to adjourn carries seven to zero. Good night, everyone. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Carson. Carson, are you there?